Hello everyone, it is Erica Rogers, your ambassador for Christ, right here this week on Transformation TV. Last week, we talked about giving. We talked about giving last week. We talked about the blessing of the giver, that there is a blessing in being a giver. You know, when you plant seed, just like if you were to go into a seed store and get you some seed and plant it in the ground, like a farmer, you will go and you have to wait for your harvest. You'll go put it in the ground, cover it up with some dirt, water it, till it, care for it, and then you will get a harvest. And it works the same way with the Word of God and in the kingdom of God. And I just want to let you know, you guys see that I've had supernatural debt cancellation. I've had it actually three or four times. The first time it was a debt that was um, over $7,000 got canceled it. Then he canceled an um, old Navy credit card debt I'd had. I mean, he wiped it clean. They canceled the $500 that I owe them and any late payments I had on my credit report, it was canceled, done. Then I got um, my, it was an apartment complex where I used to live. I owed, they said I owed them $275. God wiped it out. But how you, how many of you know that if you go back and look at those testimonies and those supernatural, it took time. I put seed in the ground. I tilled the ground. And then I got my harvest. So you can't get weary in well-doing. But you have to keep on going and fight what the good fight of faith. I believe you talked about that. And last week, just a quick review. I know I have the music playing, but I want to play this song because it's very important with this message. It goes with the message. And the song that I'm playing is William, Mur William Murphy's. This is my season by William Murphy. Okay. And we just have to believe that everything, and I and I went over, like he said, everything is working for my good. And I went over last week some of the scriptures. I'm gonna go um Luke 638. We talked about giving and we'll give it unto you. Good measure, shake uh, good measure. Pressed out, shaking together, running over your men, giving your bosom. We talked about 2 Corinthians 9, chapter 6 to 12, about sowing sparingly. That means if you sow every now, once and again, then you're going to reap every once and again. We talked about Matthew 6 and 21 for where your treasure is. That's where your heart will be also. We talked about Matthew 6 and 1 to take care not to do good deeds publicly or to do something um um, to get notarized or to get fame or to or to gain, you know, the approval of people. We talked about um, that you need to forgive before you give so that when you plant the seed, you're going to get a harvest for it. We talked about that. And that comes from Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 24, that before you give, you, you must forgive before you give. We talked about that. So that's a little review from last week. Now, this week. It's called, this is part two of the blessing of the giver. How should we give is my subtitle. So this is part two of the blessing of the giver. And my subtitle is how should we give? Hallelujah, somebody. So that was a little review from last week. And I have my notes here. So you'll see me glancing back and forth. God will give you direction and instructions on who and how to give. Okay, and the Bible, it, it, it talks about, it says, let every man give as he has purpose in his heart to give. So you don't, you give how you purpose in your heart. If you purpose in your heart to give, just sow a tithe, then sow a tithe. If you didn't purpose in your heart to sow tithe, then don't sow tithe because it's not going to profit you anything. God is always looking at our heart. He's always looking at our heart because out of the heart flows all the issues of life. And every scripture that I'm speaking on today, every scripture that I'm blurting out, I will always put it in the description box for you. So why? Because in the book of Timothy, it says, study and show that self approved. It's not good enough for you to listen to me um, quote scripture. It's not good enough for you to see my debt cancellation, to see me get um, the things that I believe in God for. But I want you to get them as well. I want, I want to get some emails from some people out there telling me their testimony. Okay, um, God tells us, he said, God has the king's heart in his hands. So what does that mean? It means that anybody you come in contact with, you have to know that God is your source. God is the source. He's the top level. Anything under that money, success, job, house, cars, people, 
Anything under that is a resource that all flows from God. Okay? Anything under that, it is it's a resource. God is your source. Do not do not depend on people or conditions to prosper you or to help or to help you. God does use people now. He does you because he has used some people to help me in my life. And whenever I need help, he always send a person. And sometimes it takes the person time to be obedient to what God has told them to do in your life. But God does, he uses people. He needs us to be givers. That's why we all should be givers because that's what he uses. He uses people. But what I'm telling you is like, don't depend on, well, if so-and-so don't do it, it won't get done. No, if God don't do it, it won't get done. Okay, because if God presses on so-and-so hard to do this for you and they don't do it, God will find someone else to do it. He, he, he always has someone else. Just like I can't help but to think about Abraham when he told Abraham to go and kill his son, a son that he waited, him and Sarah waited so long for. They were in their 90s and 100 years old when they were blessed with his son. But, but just by being obedient, he took his son up to sacrifice his son. But there was a ram in the bush. And I say that to say this, that, yeah, God may have told someone to bless you. God may have, you know, said things to people to give to you or whatever, and they haven't done it yet. But just just remember, God is my source, and I know he got a ram in a bush somewhere for me. Amen, somebody. Okay, so how should we give? We should, we should give tithe. Okay, it only works in your favor for you to pay your tithe. What is tithe? Tithe means tenth. It's a tenth of your gross income. So let's say you gross $1,400 every two weeks or $1,400 every week. So a tenth of that is $140 that you should be paying tied to God. That's 10% of $1,400 is $140. And out of $1,400, that's a small amount. And then you also should give offer. You should offer to God. Um, you should give first fruits of all your increase. So let's say that, you know, you're working a job and you're up every year for a review and you get an increase, a 3%, 5%, 10% increase, a promote um, increase in your salary, increase in your pay, that first increase, that first paycheck that you get. If the increase was $50 more or $10 more or whatever that increase was, you would take that out and you would sow it to God as a first fruit. Because he promises that when you give the lump, when you give the first fruit, the lump is blessed and the blessing stays in the house. So when you give your first fruit, that means everything that comes after that first one is going to be blessed. Amen, somebody. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So let's see when God gives us direction on how to give. He always, he always provides. It's not, unlike God for you to be a giver and he's not going to provide for you. I'm reminded of um, Elijah, not Elisha, S-H, but Elijah, J-H, was told to go to a certain woman's house and she would bake him a cake. And the woman said, well, you know, God cannot have sent you here because I only have enough for me and my son. And then after that, we're going to eat this cake and me and my son, we're going to die. But see, she had faith. What is faith? It's seeing without believing. It's seeing without believing. It's, it's I'm, I'm going to walk by my faith by what God said and not by what I see. And so what did she do? She baked him a cake and she continued to have more and more and more. Jesus told Peter, let down your, let down your nets. For a catch. So because Peter let Jesus bar his boat to preach in. He gave back to Peter. And what did Peter get? Peter got a net breaking harvest. He, he caught so many fish that it broke his nets. Okay. What about when you need to pay your taxes? You need to pay your bills. Do you, do you not think that God will tell you where to get the money from? Or he won't let the money come to you? Or Okay, let's talk about that. So in the Bible, it speaks about Jesus told Peter to open the mouth of a fish, of a certain fish, to get money out to go pay their taxes. That's in the word of God. Like I said, I'll put all the scriptures down so that you can go and search them out and read them and study. 
Now, Malachi chapter 3, verses 9 to 15, I, I tell you to read it because the tithe, we should give our tithe to God. Why? Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. And, you know, and on our money, if you read our money, the money says, and God, we trust. We shouldn't be trusting in no money anyway. Hallelujah. What else can we give to God? It's like I said, it's not always money we should give. It's other things that we can give. We need to give our time to God. We need to take time to sit down and read our Bible and go to church and um, study and show ourselves approved so that we can know when, when these things in this physical world comes against us, like debt, homelessness, um, bill payment, sickness, disease. Um, strife, unforgiveness, when all these things come against you in this physical world, you need to know how to fight this battle because um, the Bible says that our our battle is not against flesh and blood. That means it's never against the person that you're seeing, you're touching, and you're talking to. It's always a spiritual battle. Everything in this world that was born that you have came from the spiritual world first, then it manifests physically. I did a, a teaching on that. In one of my videos, I believe it's um, about the spirits. I, I did it. I did the um, a, a teaching, a detailed teaching about that. We should give God thanks. We should always give God thanksgiving. In James um, chapter one, verse two, it talks about counting it, count it all joy. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is Roman eight and eighteen, and it says. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. We should give ourselves to God. I always talk about Romans 10, 9, 10 about being saved. If you just go and you believe that prayer, you say that prayer, you receive Jesus, you will be saved. And when you die, you will go to heaven. It's not on what, what you did bad. It's not about what you did so good. It's all about Jesus. We have to learn how to take ourselves out the equation and just know that Jesus when you go to the pearly gates and they say, why are you coming in? Your only response is because of Jesus, because he died for me, because I believe he is the son of God, because I believe on Jesus. That's your only response. There's no other response. I mean, there's no other response necessary if you ask me. I mean, he is the reason, period, period. It's, it's not even about us. We try to make it about us, but it's not even about us. It's about Jesus. In John 3 and 3, in the New Living Translation, when I'm talking about we should give ourselves to God, John 3 and 3 in the NLT, the New Living Translation, it says, Jesus replied, someone asked them, well, how can one get saved? How can one go enter the kingdom of God? And Jesus told them, he said, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. I'm going to touch on this subject. I don't know if I should, but I'm going to say it because it's the word of God. Amen. A lot of people um, in the, I don't even know how they abbreviate it, let, uh, the gay community, the lesbian community, um, the transgender community, when they say, I was born this way, they are right. They were born that way. Listen to me. Don't get on Twitter and Facebook and all this and, and say that, you know, this woman said this or that or she, whatever. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't mix up my words. When they say they were born that way, they are right. They were born that way because we all were born in sin. We all were born in sin. We all were born in sin. So when they say that I was born this way, yeah, they were born that way. I agree with them. Yes, I do. We all were born in sin. But how can they overcome if they want to, the Bible talks about life and death, blessing and cursings. You know, I set before you life and death, blessings and cursings, choose life. Everything is a choice. Yeah, they were born this way. I was born a sinner. You were born a sinner, but we don't have to stay a sinner. How do we overcome that? We overcome that by being born again as John 3 and 3. So how can they overcome the challenges of, you know, um, their identity of being not sure of who they are or what they want in life by being born again. That's your answer right there. Period. I mean, I, I don't know another way to say it. 
Um, I will say this. God loves everybody. I'm not trying to judge them. God loves everybody. So when they say I was born this way, yeah, they were born that way. Don't argue with them. I do. I believe you. I, I, you know, you were born that way. One of my best friends I went to school with, um, I knew when we were in high school, middle school, you know, he liked it. I actually have two good friends. Um, they liked it, you know, the opposite sex. I mean, not the, opposite, the, the same sex as, as they were. And I was fine with that. I mean, I hung out with them. People thought I didn't care. I love them. Even today, I love them. And one of them is very successful. Um, my friend does hair. I, I don't want to say their name. That's why I'm saying they. I don't want to say their names because they may not want, want me to say their names. But they're very successful. And I spoke to my friend this was back maybe two or three years ago. And my friend told me that, you know, they were going to um, enhance their beauty. And I said, well, do you check with God about that? And, you know, I just ministered to them. But I said, I love you. It doesn't make me different. But I told them the same thing I told you. If you, you were born that way. But what you have to do, if you ever want to change your mind, you ever want to overcome this, you just have to be born again. And when you're born again, God washes away all your sins. He cleans your slate. He makes you over again. He will just rewire you and you come home to, and, and you just have a new life. You'll be a new creature. Your past can't come and overtake you anymore. So um, that's my stance on it. Do I love them? Yes. My friend, I embrace them when I see them, when I go home, I, I call home where the, the little town I grew up in. When I go there, I see them, I commune with them, we hang out, we talk, we laugh, we go shopping together, we do things together. My job is not to try to judge them. My job is to give them the word of God. Now, how they receive it is on them. A lot of people that's gay or same sex, they're going to be offended by me saying this. How dare she say, call me out? How dare she talk about this? Well, you are only offended. If, 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 this, if what I said is bothering you and you're thinking about it, now you're going to come and try to attack me, then that means there needs to be a change. But if it's not bothering you and you're comfortable with what you're doing, Grace, grace to you, honey. I still love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay. All right. Let's move on. So what else we should give? I also talked about we should give God our time. And Joshua 1 and 8 in the NLT, it says, study this book of instruction. It's talking about the Bible. It's talking about B-I-B-L-E. <clears throat> it says, study the book of instruction. Continue. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do and i'm going to stop right there that concludes my message for today guys and i just want to let you know that i love you that's not a darn thing you can do about it i want you to send me an email at ttcchange at yahoo.com that is ttcchange at yahoo.com this week i did send out if you have ever emailed me and i have your email address i sent out a letter of encouragement this week just to encourage you and if you would like to get my letters that I sent out I'm going to start sending them out on a monthly basis at least once per month I'm going to send these letters out send me your email address and just say add my email I want to get the monthly newsletter I want to get the monthly letter of encouragement so that I can get some encouragement in my day and in my month I'll be more than happy to do that for you and just remember that I love you and that's not a darn thing that you can do about it I wish of all that you will go and grow in grace and remember that I love you and I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys email me once again ttcchange at yahoo.com and once again this has been Erica Rogers right here on Church Mission TV I will see you next time here be blessed and remember I love you and that's not a hard thing you can do about it I feel like three or four times I love you guys have a great day and remember make it a prosperous week and I just want to leave you with this this is the day the Lord has made I pray that you rejoice and be glad in it have a great day